All right, so this is going to be the last of the quality of Mako motorcycles. So for the most part in this series, it wasn't um, trying to say that Mako was better than everybody else. It was mostly just trying to say that Mako is on par with the quality by showing you what they have to offer, comparing it against the CR500. For the most part, it's comparing the Mako 490 um, and their different years against the uh, CR500. Because that seems to be the one that most people like to compare it against. So for, for the most part, that's, that's how the, the series played out. Now, people say, do I have a BIOS again uh, for Makos? And of course, I mean, I own uh, eight Makos here. And I used to, I did own a Honda though. And I have owned Hondas in the past. So it's not like, um, I mostly like Hondas, but um, for, the, for the most part, I like Mako better. Um, but the, the point wasn't that um, Honda has bad quality. It was just showing you <coughs> this is what Honda has, what Mako has. So you can make at least see that for the most part that Mako is not bad quality. And if you think it's better quality, or I do, but I mean if, if you think it's better quality, then it's better quality. Uh, one of the things people were mentioning was the bearings, right? So the crank bearings on the CR500 are roller bearings, or um, they're ball bearings, and they're roller bearings on the Mako. Um, ball bearings have less friction so they can get more spin. Uh, roller bearings last longer um, and of course can take more uh, radial loads on them, but they um, have more friction. And so people were having that as a trade-off as far as one bike or the other. And it has to do with, that one in particular just has to do with um, how much friction do you get on, on the uh, roller bearings as compared to the ball bearings. And um, is that loss of horsepower noticeable or not? I don't know. Um, there, there is an industrial um, turn towards replacing ball bearings with roller bearings just for the longevity and because obviously you don't want to keep changing them out all the time and um, uh, if you want to argue that for example you want to squeeze every single possible amount of horsepower out of it and you're okay with keep changing things all the time then you should also switch to a chain based primary drive like these older Makos have because chain based primary drives are, they have more maintenance because the chain can stretch and you have to change them, but it has a more efficient, better transfer of torque and less um, loss to friction. So, Honda has straight cut gears. So if you want to get the most performance, you say, well, I want to throw ball bearings. Well, okay, we'll also update the primary drive to a chain drive then. <clears throat> I mean, if you're really, really serious about getting all the performance you want out of it and comparing ball bearings versus ruler bearings, um, you also already have made a trade-off that to not have to replace your primary drive, you've made a trade-off for longevity for having it so that you have straight cut gears. So you've already made one trade-off. So why not with what's wrong with the ruler bearings? So that's just my take on it. So. One other thing I have, and people were wondering about, there's, there's five springs in the modern Mako clutch, compared with, say, a CR500 clutch, which has six springs. And um, the older Makos, the, the really, really older ones, don't even have springs here. They have washers in the middle. Um, so typically, on a Japanese bike, like a 125 or something may have five springs, but a CR500 will have six. If you look at a Zabo engine, it does have six. These Mako ones, um, I'd have to check and see if I have a clutch and see how big it is compared to this for the CR500. But um, one thing is how big the clutch is and also how big these springs are. Um, I haven't had any of these slip, so, um, that's the main thing, as long as these aren't slipping. In fact, these are also very hard to pull. So, harder to pull than the, than the CR500. So it could be that the CR500 has weaker springs, so it has more of them. And the Makos have stronger springs, so less of them. I really don't know. Um, like I said, the main thing is, does it slip or not? And I have not had these slip, so I think that's a non-issue. 
whether you have five, I don't care how many you have, as long as the clutch works, <clears throat> what would be the only thing I could think of. The next thing that people, people that someone did ask about was the bolts. And so the next thing people do ask about is the bolts. As you can see here, Mako's mostly use Allen wrenches for everything. Um, on the newer bikes. Um, on the older bikes, they actually had screws. So there, it's just a matter of preference. Um, there are pluses and minuses to, to everything. So for example, <clears throat> with the screw, now of course you can change them out when you change these things, but uh, with the screw, you are more likely to jump off and hit something. With the Allen, um, you're able to get them more into close corners and also, they are a bit slimmer, and the these um, <clears throat> the the where you put these in at the hole here isn't exposed to the elements. Whereas if you have something else, it can be exposed to the elements and get damaged. In fact, um, uh, the Japanese bikes they actually do use Allens on the carb intake. And some people were saying that, well, Allens uh, wear out faster. Not really. Um, everything strips. I mean, I don't care what kind it is. I mean, the the flatheads are harder to strip than the than the Phillips, and a lot more of the bikes are actually Phillips. But um, um, and if you have the bolt, the hex bolts, I mean, they're exposed to the elements. If you um, if you use the wrong size in here and you're not very careful with it, you will strip it, of course. So they're not a couple of usage. And in fact, if you look at, like for this, this for example, if something's on tight, these things here are only grabbing a small portion of the size of the hex bolts, and these can cause it to strip as well. So, I mean, these ones here are a little bit better because they go completely around it. But um, <clears throat> if you use the wrong size of these, you will strip bolts. The same as with Allens. A lot of people don't realize the Allens have different sizes. And in fact, um, a standard, these ones are sometimes like five millimeter or four millimeter or four and a half millimeter. There's also like a three sixteenths that will sometimes fit these, but they'll be a tiny bit loose. You may not even notice it. And in that case, you may end up then uh, stripping these out. So I, I don't see any issues um, with, the, with the selection of bolts. So that's just what, uh, what I think here. The next thing I want to talk about is an interview with Roger DeCoster back in, I say, back in 2000, um, where he goes through the years from 71 to through 2001 of motorcycle racing. And let me just do some quotes in here. Okay, 1973. That was the year that Mako went to long travel suspension. Yamaha also came out with the Monoshock. Those of us at Suzuki were a bit behind. Okay, so some more stuff. And then he says, Mako was very strong. Willie Barr was on the Mako that year and he rode very well. I ended up winning the championship again, but it was tight the entire season. And then he goes on to talk about the long travel suspension and things like that. Um, uh, of course, Suzuki was not pleased with the rule change when the rule came. Da da da. Um, okay, so the next one. Let's see here. Okay, so 1974. We had a new race manager in Japan. We went from a short stroke engine to a long stroke engine, which was done more to emulate what Mako was doing. Mako seemed to be working very well and getting more traction as a result. We also went to a frame that had more laid down shocks and more suspension travel. That bike had potential. It was the first year for it. And we had so many changes and we had a few problems with, with things breaking. I actually was still in contention for the championship. Da, da, da. Uh, I think that's the last thing he says about about Mako in here. So again, there you go, right there. And and 
1974 talking about how Suzuki, as I pointed out in the very first video, copied um, Mako's suspension. So, there you have it, straight from a factory Suzuki racer themselves. So, and also giving credit to how good Mako was back then. So in pop culture, um, here's a picture of Mako in the Dukes of Hazard. You can see it here with the crew. And here's another shot of a Mako um, 250GS um, in the Dukes of Hazard. So. There's also something called the Internet Movie Cars Database, IMCDB. And in here, we can search on Mako, and you can see a whole bunch of um, uh, Mako stuff come up. Uh, in fact, it was actually in the TV show Chips, among all these other movies that had uh, Mako in it. It even tells you the episode that the bike was in. Another one that's actually not listed here is um, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. That one actually also mentions Mako by name and also there are a few shots in the movie where you can see a Mako. Unfortunately, I can't find a clip of it, but it's a scene when they go to the hotel room, another reporter comes over and he starts being real excited about all the, the bikes he's seen that day at the races. And he starts talking about he's seen Husqvarna's and he says Mako's. And um, he's, he looks, whenever they're looking at him, they, they see him in an army outfit and there's bombs going off behind him and stuff like that. So that's the scene where he mentions Mako's. And in the next day scenes, I believe you can see a couple of uh, Mako's there. And there's also, also an issue in the movie in that the movie came out in 1970. Or not, so the movie came out in 1998, but it's supposed to be from like the 1970s, the early 1970s. And some of the bikes have front disc brakes, some of the Hondas and stuff. If you look at the, the next day scene, you'll see it. There's a bunch of bikes that are, that are like from the 80s. So uh, that's pretty much it for, for the series on Mako quality. So I hope that this has pretty much answered any questions that anyone has, may have had about the quality of Mako motorcycles. So, let me know in the comments below how you've, en how you've enjoyed or not enjoyed uh, this series. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.